Well, everybody, it's that time of year. I am getting maple fever. It happens every year. You get in these freeze thaw cycles. Well, I'll tell you, we had five below last week. We had two feet of snow, and yesterday was 43 degrees. Everything is melting, and that's what makes maple syrup season work. Mud, slush, snow, trying to haul things around. So I'm feeding the animals today and I'm getting on with gathering my maple syrup equipment, making more drop tubes, and going out to the woods. So one of the first things you need to know about tapping maple trees is knowing that you're tapping a maple tree. Not an ash tree, not an oak tree, not a walnut tree. Let's take a look at a few specimens around the yard and around the woods. Now one of the things to keep in mind about in tapping your trees is if you've got a lot of snow around the bottom of the tree, allow for some extra length in your drop line because when that bucket drops down from the snow melting like it is now, you can end up too short and then your tubes aren't fitting into your buckets. Now if you're just tapping from the old fashioned taps on a bucket, you don't have to worry about that melting snow so much. But see, here's an example of a healing maple tap hole. And those holes stay all the way around that tree for the life of the tree. Here's an old hole from a long, long time ago. Here's one from a year or two ago. Look for that. Now in this old tree, most of those holes are from my own tree tapping. All right, so this is a maple syrup drop line. This is food grade tubing that is made for maple syrup. I'm using three 16th inch size tubes and taps or spiles. Tapping is what you do to a tree. A spile is what you put in the tree. So you can see how that's easily confusing to some people. Now this is a Dominion and Grimm spile made for three 16th inch tubing. You could put this into a tree and hang a bucket or a milk jug on it. Um, the, really the best way to do that is to have the drop line attached to it. No amount of forcing is going to get this into here. This is barbed here to go into the tubing so that it can't be removed back out. And the 5 16 inch plastic tree taps I find generally are double barbed. So there's not a lot getting them back off. Now you can stick the end of this in hot water and try to get it on with a vise. But then you have the problem of not collapsing your tubing at the same time. So what I use is a maple syrup tubing tube, and this is a double-sided one for using out in the woods. I only bought this one. Um, it's over $200. The single one generally can run about $150. So to make use of one tool is the best way for me to do that. Now what this essentially is, you can see, is two vice grips and they take threaded rod nuts and they cut them, they weld them onto here. These are specifically made for this 316 inch tubing and then 
you know, like a pair of reverse loppers, the way it's all put together. A lot of people are really um, inventive and make this on their own. When I needed it, my husband did not have the time to build it. I bought him all the supplies and I'm glad that it worked out the way it did because the vice grips that I bought him just using in our shop broke and I would have died having made that and then needed it out in the woods. So this is made by Pruno. Um, I picked it up at my maple syrup provider. You can order them online. They're all about the same basic design. So what you do is you just clamp your tube down on one side and then I hold my spile. I always make sure that it's curving this way so that it's going to the bucket or the tree where I want it. Now this one, one of the kids have tried to put it in and it's bent, so I'm not even gonna try to use that. If you miss and you don't get it just right, you can end up with the bent barb there on the end. I don't know how well you can see that, but um, this one is not gonna go into anything very easily. And then what you would normally do this would be splicing your drop line into your main line or your branch line in the woods by pushing them both together on a T fitting. So what I'm doing is just sticking this flat part here. I've had a helper <laughs> playing with my toys. This is not a toy for the kids and if I ever see them with it, uh, not putting together tubes, they get it taken away pretty fast. And then it just pushes in. Now I can see that didn't go in as much. This is out of adjustment. So I just need to tighten that down. I started this job this morning and then realized I was going to be the person feeding the animals today. So everything got left sitting here. This is a good job to do watching a good movie. For me, it usually ends up being Shenandoah or Breakfast at Tiffany's and occasionally the sound of music. We watch a lot of the same mo movies over and over. If you've never watched the movie Shenandoah, I really recommend watching it because there is a lot of interesting things said in that movie and a lot of views that we agree on. So that's just a little demonstration of putting these together. Real nice, real easy to do, and just like that, I've made three drop lines. So this is what I'm going to be working on for the rest of the day. In the meantime, if you're interested in any reading materials, this is called the Maple Syrup Producers Manual, and it is the second edition that I have. It's been out for a long while. It's a really good reading material for education purposes for, you know, just like refreshing things, even going into new things. Like at first I didn't use a maple syrup evaporator, I only used a flat pan. So it had a lot of information for me in learning the different components of that and kind of how to set it up. Because when you buy your evaporator, your actual setup, it doesn't come with like how-to instructions, how to set it up or how to use it. And that's where these books come in handy and where the University of YouTube comes in handy because there's a lot of seasoned maple syrup producers that have been doing it on flat pants and evaporators for years that can even still teach someone like me who's been doing it for about 10 years. Now this is another book that I like to refer to a lot. It's called The Sugar Maker's Companion. A lot of good useful information in here. However, it's a lot of college education type uh, research studies and things like that. Not a whole lot of actual out in the field experience, but a lot of book experience. This is something I really wanted to have when I was getting into doing my drop lines because this teaches you a lot about gravity and fall. It will teach you about, you know, using a site and going out into like my deep slope, lining everything up so that in the future I can put it all into lines and just drop it into like an IBC tote down by the river to pump out. And it teaches you about mechanical releasers and lifts and different things like that. 
and just in general how to plan your tubing setup so that you're not on bucket collection. Now that being said, I bought 400 of these extra taps so that I can make several for ourselves and to have supplies on hand to make drops for our Etsy store to ship out to you. We sell them in multiples of three, five, and 10. You can go there and see how much it costs for you for shipping. I do ship them out very fast in one to two days. So if you wanna get into this on your own, you won't miss a beat in your maple syrup season. So that's it for today, everybody. I've gotta to get to putting these together and get a movie on the big screen so I can sit here with my feet up and relax. Have a good, relaxing day yourself, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button to show support for our channel, and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.